In this final episode, we put the finishing touches on the exterior, the cooking station, the living area, and studio, so don't touch that dial. All right, before jumping in, I just wanted to say thanks again to everyone who's watched so far. The series has been really cool and really fun to put together. I really hope you got some good ideas and, and good tricks and stuff out of it. So thank you so much again for watching. And if you'd like to see me doing more series like this, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. All right, first up is giving water to our Brahmin friend. <laughs> and uh, so I'm gonna do that with the junkyard fountain and I'm gonna merge it down into a duck because when it's on the ground, it's rather inconspicuous and it's actually pretty easy to merge. Next, I'm gonna add some fences over by the corn, um, really just because I think it looks good. Now I'm gonna put some pumpkins over by where I planted the gourds, and but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually merge two of them together so it looks like they're it's like one complete pumpkin instead of a carved pumpkin, you know? Um, I'm doing that just for immersion, basically. All right, to finish up the garden detailing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for kind of like empty spaces. And so here I'm adding in some corn into kind of this area between the fermenter and the chickens um, for no particular reason other than to fill the space. And I'm gonna layer it with a kind of broken down fence as well. Then I'm gonna add a sapling where I think it has the most visual impact. I wanna add in just a little bit more green, but I don't wanna use like a fern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this um, radiation barrel uh, plant thing, <laughs> whatever it's called. And uh, But first I'm gonna merge a candle down inside of it, one of those skull candles, just so it glows a little bit. Um, and you won't be able to see it because it's hidden. Um, and then I'm gonna merge the barrel itself down onto a playing card and then use that to um, nestle it down underneath the ground. So it uh, has this kind of really cool look. Okay, so next up, I wasn't entirely happy with that transformer thing that I built a couple episodes ago, and I really wanted to use that old-timey telephone um, as kind of like the transformer thing. So what I ended up doing was I found out that it set on one of those signs. Um, I forget what the signs are called, but it will sit on it, and so what I can do is I can then lift up the sign and um, nestle that kind of like in the wall, so to speak, which will allow me to kind of like hide the dangly mouthpiece. And it'll save me a little bit of budget too, which is nice. In order to make it look like it's actually connected to the wall, like the, the wires connected, what it is, I placed a power conduit or power connector, sorry, on the side wall and then burned that wall. And then that kind of gets rid of the power connector that allow me to place the uh, old timey telephone thing where I want it. It took me a couple tries to kind of get it right, to get it lined up correctly. But once I did, I think it looks great. I realized I needed the power connector to come out just ever so slightly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plop it on top of one of those mounted fireflies and it should just give me a little bit of extra room and uh, connect to the thing really well.
there's a little bit of stuff sticking out of the back, but we can totally hide that with some decoration. All right, let's head inside. So I'm gonna change the wallpaper all to that kind of rusty brick color because that's kind of how the KMAX station was when we took a look at it before. So I kind of want to mimic that. I'm going to swap out that metal desk we had before for this wooden one, um, only for aesthetics, for vibes. <laughs> I mentioned before how I wanted to put another dish on this side of the building and initially I wanted to try to like add it onto a console or something like that but I couldn't really kind of make it work so I'm just going to slap it on the roof and call it a day. <laughs> Here I'm just adjusting the console so they fit the entire room um, or the way I had it before there was a little bit of a gap. So. I noticed the smoke machine has this kind of cool grating on the side that kind of looks like some of the vents that I saw at the KMAX station. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it kind of like into that fan system that I built um, last episode and to make it look like it's kind of incorporated and it's some sort of mechanism that's kind of working all together even though it's just purely aesthetic. All right, so this destroyed middle wall, I wanted to kind of make it look like Julie was patching it up a little bit. So I wanted to try to add a fence, but it wouldn't fit, obviously. <laughs> and uh, so what I ended up doing is I swapped out some of the walls to the abandoned mine kit. And for some reason, when you burn them, they turn yellow. They don't um, just disappear. So they're kind of unique in that sense. I learned that trick, I think, from Mr. Church, if I remember correctly. And uh, what that allow you to do is actually play stuff inside of it but um, what I ended up doing was um, it wouldn't fit initially so I just burned everything around that wall and I was eventually able to kind of get the the fence to fit. The dust that I merged the computer into, I don't always like it that you can kind of see the computer thing sticking down. So what I'm gonna do is try to see if I can get a wall decor item to sit in the desk. And that um, flatwood sign actually works pretty well on this desk. So I'll add that flatwood sign first and then I'll add another sign. And I think this central sign actually worked pretty good. It's just to kind of mask it so that you can't see the, the computer underneath.
All right, so I forgot curtains before. <laughs> I would I would recommend that um, before you start decorating, like definitely put curtains at the top of your list to place before anything else. But here what I need to do is I just need to get everything out of the way and then I can place the curtain. Sometimes if it won't place, um, just try moving stuff out of the way and, and most of the time it will. A good tip for curtains though is once they place them, they have kind of a wide hit box. So all you need to do is burn them and then it'll allow you to place your furniture kind of wherever you wherever you typically want. I'm having a similar issue with the curtains in the bedroom, even though I took everything out. I think it's conflicting with the vines on the back. So what you can do is actually turn them around and they will place freely. It's kind of weird. Uh, you have to turn off snapping though and they should place uh, perfectly. You can merge one of those big planters down onto a bar stool and it makes it look kind of like a plant stand. I learned this trick, I think, from Nuka Violet, so it's pretty cool. I'm adding this potion bottle I recently got because I think it kind of looks like a little perfume bottle. I always burn the bed and put something underneath. It's usually a suitcase, but uh, you can usually put whatever you want. But I just think it just adds so much to the immersion. Um, it, I always do it in every one of my camps. I thought it'd be kind of cool if this gramophone could be incorporated into the studio a little bit. So I'm gonna merge it down into one of those consoles and make it seem like it's part of the whole system that's been there for, you know, ever. All right, now it's time to fill up this shelf. So what I typically do is I go through my menu and I pick stuff that fits with the theme I'm building and also is small enough to fit on a shelf and I'll place it on the ground. And that'll give me a good idea of kind of like everything I have um, that I want to place. And so then I can start kind of mapping out the uh, different shelves that I want to place and that sort of thing.
I typically don't merge stuff all the way down to the bottom. Um, I just do the bottom shelf and then I burn the entire thing so that I can put stuff underneath uh, and then on top as well. So you can add anything you like. I usually do stash boxes. Here I'm doing a suitcase and a couple other things, but it's really up to you. Just make sure it's kind of on, on theme. These trophies I thought would be a really cool addition. It almost seems like they would be trophies that the radio station got before everything went to shit, you know? <laughs> I just absolutely love these light up flamingos and I try to use them whenever I can. Here I'm just going to merge it down into this planter and uh, just give it a little bit extra life. Here I'm just trying to provide the best feng shui for the desk. Here I just wanted to add a little bit of glow so that the statues kind of shined a little bit. So I'm going to add in one of those neon tube lights in between the wall seam so that it's hidden and it's out of the way. Lighting is usually one of the last things I do in a camp, and it's one of my favorite things to do too. <laughs> um, here, I want to—I know I want to add a little bit of light into the living room, but some of these lamps are so bright. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to merge this lantern down into this lamp so that it just gives a little bit of glow, um, and it's not too like crazy. I did this also in one of my other tutorials, my beginner to pro tutorial. So check that out if you haven't yet. In immersive camps like this, you want to keep lighting to a minimum. You don't want to feel like you're standing on the surface of the sun when you enter a building like this, especially at nighttime. It should be mellow. I mean, think about your house at night. Do you have every light on imaginable or do you kind of have a couple mood lights, maybe some candles? All right, the inside's almost done. Now I just need to do what I like to call rounding the edges a little bit. So I kind of find little spots here and there that need a little bit of love to kind of really make it shine and so I'm just going to merge a couple plants down together and place them in the living room to kind of give it a nice organic feel. All right now to finish the kitchen area so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the stove over to the side because I decided I want a table on the patio so that uh, for like eating cooking hanging out like that kind of thing um, so I need to kind of do that all over again and uh, it's always fun to do something like 10 times. It's, it's great.
from what I remember, Julie is vegetarian, so we're gonna stick with all veggie stuff. So I'm gonna merge these two succulents down into the chopping block so that it looks like she's chopping up uh, veggies and stuff. God, I love Dana Carvey so much. All right, so I typically do this in most of my camps. I just merge a couple pumpkins together and use them in the kitchen so it looks like you're kind of cooking pumpkins. Always be sure to burn and put stuff under your workbenches. It just adds so much to the immersion. Yeah, it's crazy. Just a few more bits to use up the last amount of budget we have and we're good to go. All right, there you have it. My take on an Appalachia radio build that I think Julie would absolutely love. We built a lore-friendly K-Max transmission station based on the one we saw in the mire, a far-reaching radio tower capable of hitting every corner of the wasteland, a beautiful, self-sufficient garden for Julie to grow her own food and trade with others around the forest, a pretty dope studio space for all-day broadcasting, and a cool living area for Julie to chill and relax at after a long day. So what did you think of this build? Did you learn anything new or did it spark any ideas for your next camp? I would love to know. As always, thank you so much for watching this series. If this is something you'd like to see me do regularly on the channel, definitely let me know down in the comments. I would really appreciate it. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and please like and share with your friends. It would really help the channel. Oh, and keep an eye out for the cinematic tour video for this build, which I will be working on after this. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.